I just got my hands on a brand new capture card and this thing is pretty cool. This is the GC55 Free Pro Live Gamer Ultra S made by Aver Media. They were graciously enough to reach out to me and send one for review. This is their brand new capture card and it offers a lot of great features, but is it actually worth it? Starting at $149, or what it's currently selling for on Amazon, which is $129, this capture card offers 4K 60Hz recording, HDR and VRR support. It also supports ultra-wide monitors, which is a big plus. It also includes a 5.1 audio channel. Additionally, it allows for 240Hz pass-through, which is really nice. Getting into the unboxing, inside the box you are greeted with the capture card itself, a USB Type-C cable, an HDMI cable, a couple of manuals, one including the download or where you can find the download for their software. Setting it up is quite easy. On the front side of the adapter, there are two HDMI ports labeled in and out. In my case, I'm going to be using this with my Xbox Series X. Start by plugging your HDMI cable into the import from your Xbox. Take the other HDMI cable and plug it into the out port and then connect it to your monitor. Finally, take the USB Type-C cable, plug one end into the capture card and the other one into your PC. Once everything is set up, if it's working correctly, your display should light up as long as your console is turned on. Now, since we have our capture card hooked up properly to our Xbox, let's go download the software. Go to Aver Media's website, head over to support and downloads, find your capture card and download the software. There's also an OBS plugin, but for this video, I'm mainly gonna focus on their software. Once you're done installing it, go ahead and launch it. It should automatically detect your capture card and display what you're seeing on your Xbox monitor. Now that we got the software installed, let's talk about its features. At the top left, there's the record button. Below that, there are the VRR settings, which helps stabilize your frame rates. This is a great feature that I wish I had like five years ago when I was still streaming. On the left side of your screen, you have the capture card selection at the top. Below that is the audio mixer, where you can choose your what microphone you want to use or just the different audio outputs. Farther down is the capture card settings where you can tweak things like refresh rate and resolution. There is also a profile setting and a membership section where you can register your device if you want to set up the warranty. In general settings, I recommend going into your audio output selection and switching over to the 5.1 channel audio for better sounding quality. For streamers, you can also connect your Twitch or YouTube account directly to the app. There's also a support page in case you run into any sort of issues and you wanna reach out to them, see if they can fix it on your behalf. At the top right, you find both the streaming button and the record button. Next to the record button, you can set your recording's location. At the center left of the screen, there are an option to rotate or mirror your screen, which is useful if you need to adjust your layout before going live. After using this capture card for over a week, I can say it really works well, and I haven't experienced any sort of issues. One feature I wish it had was timeline rollback, like how Elgato allows you to capture a moment after it happens even though you weren't recording. I understand that it might be patented by Elgato itself, but this would be a great addition to this capture card software. But aside from that, the overall software experience was really solid. The capture card worked as expected, plug it in and you're good to go. While recording, the LED turns red and when you stop, it will switch back to blue, which is a nice touch, letting you know when you're recording and when you're not. Also, if you're wondering what kind of performance or how much it drains your performance on your PC, when I was recording, it was only using about 4% of my CPU. I have a Ryzen 9 5900X, and it was using about 5 to 10% of my RAM, which I have 64 gigs. So if you're running a lower end system, this might be something to be aware of. Uh, but I think if you're mainly just streaming off of a computer that's low end, this will do a wonderful job. But if you're looking for just to record something from your consoles, this will also do just fine for that. Now, here's the real question. Should you buy this capture card or go somewhere else? At the end of the day, if you're looking for a new capture card, whether you're upgrading or getting into recording, this is a solid option. 
And if you're planning on streaming, it's an even better choice. Aver Media clearly designed this with streamers in mind, and I think it does a great job. Plus, having the ability to record everything you do is also a big plus. I had a wonderful time using this capture card, and I highly recommend buying it if you're getting into streaming. Um, as for recording, it does a great job as well, and the software is pretty solid. I had a great experience overall, and I have been using this for about two weeks in total. Um, I'm actually working on my previous video. It's, well, a video that's going to come out after this, uh, which is, I'm not going to say it, but I used this capture card in it. It did a beautiful job recording in 4K, 60 frames, and I even lowered it to 1440p, which it records at 144 hertz. So I don't know, I'm, I'm going to leave it here. I think if you need a capture card and you don't care about Elgato's special features or whatever, honestly, this is a great deal. So you guys have a good one.